So I've been asked to talk a little bit about myself and I'll delve into the research that I presented at AIDS 2018. So I just recently, as of three days ago, graduated from Duke Medical School. And thank you. Um, and I also received a master's in public health during medical school. And also spent a year in Mbarara, Uganda, working with Mbarara University of Science and Technology during medical school. And I'll be starting as a resident physician at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston um, this coming June. So a little bit about the research I presented at age 2018. Um, we know that studies have shown that in people living with HIV, even after chronic ART and good suppression of virus, they still have heightened immune activation and greater inflammation compared to those who are not infected with HIV. And this increased state of inflammation is thought to uh, mediate certain comorbidities, such as the increased risk of heart attacks, diabetes, osteoporosis, cognitive dysfunction, HIV positive participants, um, as opposed to HIV negative. So our research question was, does this immune activation also contribute to mental health outcomes? Uh, we were very interested in depression. And ameliorating, uh, alleviating depression in people living with HIV is not only good for promoting the quality of life of depressed individuals, but I think is crucial to accomplishing the UNAIDS 90-90-90 targets. As you can see from this figure, depression affects every step of the HIV cascade. As we heard earlier this morning, poor mental health status increases sexually um, high-risk behaviors, increasing risk of con contracting HIV. And in the middle of the cascade, um, people who are more depressed um, tend to be lost to follow up, and there's poor retention and care. And finally, at the end of the cascade, people who are depressed um, are less adherent to antiretroviral therapy, and thus are more at risk uh, at experiencing virologic failure. So to examine the relationship between inflammation and um, depression, we enrolled 453 Ugandans who were initiating antiretroviral therapy. And we followed these individuals for two years, and every three months collected data surrounding their depression symptoms. And at the beginning of initiation of ART, as well as six months after ART initiation, we collected serum biomarker levels for five biomarkers. That's an interleukin-6, a marker of coagulation, two markers of macrophage activation, and a marker of uh, tryptophan metabolism. That's the kynurenin-tryptophan ratio. And our primary exposure was basically the decrease um, of these serum biomarker levels upon starting antiretroviral therapy. So we found for two of the biomarkers, soluble CD14 and KT ratio, that greater decreases um, in biomarker in the first six months after starting ART was associated with a lower risk of depression in the follow-up visits. So you see on this bar graph, the, as you go right on the bars, those are um, greater quartiles of greater decrease um, in the biomarker. And when we had uh, put these two biomarkers in a model together, we found that the relationship was only slightly attenuated and remain qualitatively similar, suggesting that maybe soluble CD14 and KT ratio mediated pathways uh, might be independent. Um, and uh, th these models were adjusted for a multitude of covariates, uh, including heavy drinking, smoking, and BMI. So some takeaway points. Um, although ART does mediate uh, decreased risk in depression in people living with HIV, we might need additional measures to continue to reduce mental health disturbances in these individuals. And this research suggests two targets or pathways that we might want to um, engineer therapeutics for or other interventions, um, such as uh, targeting the KT ratio pathway, as well as soluble CD14 pathway, and hopefully to reduce the mental health burden in people living with HIV. Thank you.